Over the past year, I've made a number of gearboxes, but this one is different. Most gear sets I've made have a fixed ratio, but this one is designed to be stacked. So it can be four to one, 16 to one, or really as high as you want if you stack enough stages. My past gearboxes have also used different types of motors, including stepper motors and brush DC motors. But ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to announce it's finally time. We're going brushless. Oh, shit. So anyway, this gearbox uses a stacked planetary gear set and the whole design is meant to be 3D printed. I've printed all the parts for this project out of PLA and PLA Plus, and so far they've been holding up great. But while the parts are printing, let's talk about the motor. I'm using a 5010 brushless motor. You may notice that this motor has three wires. First time I saw that, I was like, okay, that's kind of scary. The three wires is actually because the motor has three phases. And in brushless motors, the control is achieved electronically using an electronic speed controller, which outputs a sine wave rather than a constant voltage. The timing of these three sine waves is what controls the motor rather than brushes running on a commutator like a normal DC motor. All this is to basically say they go whirr and they look really cool. They also have the effects of a lot longer lifetime, they're quieter and higher efficiency operation. Finally, everything is printed, which means we can assemble. As I mentioned earlier, this gearbox is a series of stages of planetary reductions. Each stage reduces the previous stage by one quarter of the speed. Each of the stages is identical, except for the last stage, which has a different planet carrier, which has an output hub rather than another sun gear. So first I want to test this gearbox with just one stage. In this configuration, I'll have a four to one reduction. So the output should have a higher torque, but will still be spinning pretty quick. You may notice that the output hub on this looks a little different from the other printed parts, and this is because I resin printed it. Since the output hub needs to be pretty tough, I use this Ceratec Blue Nylon Black Resin. This stuff seems super durable and printed amazing. It seems to be a really good balance of strength and flexibility for engineering parts. This part could also totally be FDM printed. As with all my projects, all the CAD files as well as a hardware list can be found linked in the description below. If you're interested in learning more about the concepts behind this project or other STEM subjects, the sponsor of this video may be a good place to start. On Brilliant.org, you can learn interactively about a wide range of subjects in the STEM field. It has courses to fit any level from foundational math such as algebra, all the way up to advanced concepts like differential equations and artificial neural networks. When I looked through some of these courses, I was really impressed with how they focus on getting you to understand the concepts rather than just making you memorize facts. You can get started today for free and the first 200 people to use the link in the description below or go to brilliant.org slash Rectin will get 20% off their subscription. Now let's get back to the gearboxes. With one reduction, the gearbox is still easily back drivable and feels very smooth. So I think there are two things that are leading to this noise. One is the high pressure angle of the gears and high clearances because of the 3D printing process, along with the fact that I use straight cut gears rather than helical gears. Additionally, I don't have any lubricant in the gearbox yet. What's cool about this design is you can add as many stages as you want. For this video, let's just add two more to get a final reduction of four cubed or 64 to one. These two middle stages we're gonna add, we use the other planet carrier, which has the sun gear to drive the next stage.
Okay, let's see what this gearbox can really do. So I printed this mount for it. I used this silk PLA that Anycubic sent over. Normally I'm not a fan of these shiny filaments, but this stuff actually looks pretty cool. Kind of has this machined aluminum look. Anyway, by attaching an arm to the gearbox, which will hit a load cell, we should be able to measure the torque and test the durability of the gears. Chaos. Well, that's not in one piece anymore. So clearly I need to make this arm a bit stronger. I reprinted it using like eight wall perimeters and 85% infill, so hopefully it'll no longer be the weak link. If you're wondering why I'm making the arm go so fast, it's because I'm using a sensorless motor. This means the ESC kind of has to guess where the motor is in its rotation. And this works great at high speeds, but at low speeds it has a hard time controlling the motor and has very little torque. I did leave a hole in the back of the design so I could put a magnet for an encoder. So maybe I'll do a follow up where I use an O-Drive to control it, or maybe I'll just get a sensored motor. I also realized at this point that I forgot to put any lubrication in the gearbox. So I coated the inside with white lithium grease. Okay, so with a stronger arm fitted, we can try to measure the torque again. During all these tests, the max force the load cell saw was about 9,500 newtons. This translates to about 9.5 newton meters of torque. I'm not really sure how accurate this is since the ESC had a hard time controlling it at low speeds. Regardless, this is definitely my most powerful motor gearbox combo yet. I did take it apart for all this testing and the gears showed no signs of wear. Let me guys know if you have any ideas of what I could do with this gearbox um, or other tests I could run. But until then, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.